All right, welcome back to the Game Maker Adventure top-down tutorial. Um, this time around, we're going to focus on the enemy attack and the player attack here. So we're going to fix up the player attack because at the moment, I mean, you can spam that up and down arrow keys really fast and hammer out uh, attacks. The enemy was not going to have a chance. Instead, what we're going to do is make it so that the player has like a little reload timer um, or even a mana pool might be okay. Um, I'm actually thinking a mana pool would be cooler in this case. So let's do that. First, in the initial variables for the player, we're going to set up player health. And we'll make that equal to 100, I guess. And player mana. It's not mana. And we'll set that to 100 too. All right, so we've got player mana equals 100. And then in step event, player attack. So if we go into here, we're going to have to add an extra bit here. And player mana is greater than 10. Because it's going to cost 10 each time we hit that attack key. We may actually make it greater than 20. And we can play around with that setting. So then in here, player mana minus equals 20. Okay, so it starts at 100. We shoot out a fireball. Our mana goes down by 20. We shoot it again. It goes down by 20. We shoot it again. It goes down by 20. At some stage, it's going to get to zero. And we won't be able to shoot anymore. So we need a somewhere to regenerate that mana. So that's what we're going to add in here in this step event here. Remember that the step event happens 60 times a second in our game, if we've set it to 60 frames per second, which I have. So I don't want to increase it by a whole lot. Player mana plus equals. If I go plus equals one, well, it's going to refill the whole bar in about one, 1 1.4 seconds. So we don't want to do that. Instead, I'm going to put 0.2. It's okay to go into integers for this. It's fine. So player mana plus equals 0.2. That way... Uh, 60 times 0.2 is, we're going to refresh about 10 mana every one second or so. This might be too low. We might need to change it. Um, and then I'm going to go player mana equals clamp 0 to 100. And I have the wrong things here. I need to say player mana. Pretty sure that's how it works. Have I got the value, the minimum is 0, the maximum is 100. Okay, I mean, if you wanted to do something like have the player level up, you might store, uh, you might have a player mana max and put that in there. Say the player mana max to 100, um, but then that might change as you level up throughout the game. Um, there's loads of things that you can do in game. I mean, the, the sky's the limit. Your imagination is the limit. I can't possibly um, explain how to do everything in here, but hopefully once you get the basics, then doing some extra stuff and, and uh, adding extra features in is not going to be that complicated. All right, so there's that there. Last thing I'm going to... Well, actually, I'm not going to at this stage. I was going to draw the GUI. Um, we need to get some kind of bars or something on there so that we can see our mana um, and our health, but I'm not going to worry about those just yet. So execute a piece of code. I better put some code at the top here. Uh, update the player mana. So let's just see if this works. I've got it here, player attack. Player mana's got to be greater than 20 to attack. And every time I attack, I lose 20. Um, I might just throw a number up on the screen so you can see that it's working. So I go, and you don't need to do this bit. Draw, draw GUI. I'm going to draw a variable on the screen. I'm going to draw the variable player mana. Um, that's test variable, not draw variable. Where is draw variable? There it is. Um, player mana, and I'm going to draw it 5, 5. So it's going to draw in the top left corner. And I think I might need to draw it in white so I can see it. So I go down to here, and I can change the draw color to white. Click OK. All right, so I should be able to see in the top left corner, it should say 100. It says 100, I fire. And you can see that's going up. So I can fire. Oh, now that's a problem, isn't it? Because I can still fire as long as that's greater than... Well, I can still fire. So that's an issue. So let's go back and have a look. What have I done wrong? Step, player attack. Player men are greater than 20. Well, it's definitely not. 
Maybe I need to put that in there. Oh, okay. Um, yep, that's right. So these here, I had or, or. So this needs to be true and this needs to be true. So this is where um, there is some advanced logic in here uh, and we probably should go over logic operators in class. But this or this or this or this, uh, any of them can be true and that side of the statement will be true. In order for this side of the statement to be true, player mena has to be greater than 20. And then for the whole statement to be true, both sides have to be true. That side has to be true and that side has to be true. So that's what my error was. Um, before, it was just, it was, I probably wouldn't have been able to fire if I'd gone to the left. Okay, so now I can't actually fire. I've run out of mana, it gets up to 20, I can fire again. All right, so let's look at the enemy attacking us. So what we'll do here is we might write, I'm just trying to think of what the best way is to do this because, yeah, we'll just have it shoot the bullet at the end, at the player. So I'm gonna create a little um, sprite here. SPR enemy arrow, we'll call it. These are orcs that looks like they've got, oh, they look like they've got daggers, so I'll, I'll make it a dagger. And edit sprite, I'm gonna make this pretty small. I'll make it eight by eight, click okay, zoom in on this. And I'll make the dagger, looking at his hand there, it looks like it's got a brown handle. So I'll find brown on this color spectrum, there's brown. Brown handle, and a gray hilt and I'll probably do that the other way around with the gray hilt like that okay there's my little dagger it's really tiny that's fine um, and I will click I may actually make it bigger I may do double things here just so I can see it a little bit and get the eraser, erase, oops. Is that not an eraser tool? It doesn't want to erase. Okay, yeah, that's that's better, that's what I want. Um, and I'll just erase that square there. Okay, there's a dagger, that's a little bit better. And I'll center that sprite and click okay. Now I'm gonna make an object for this obj enemy dagger and use the enemy dagger sprite um, and click OK. That's all that's pretty much going to do. Now on here, I'm going to have a timer. Okay, so when the when the program starts, we're going to set an alarm. I could set it in code. I may as well set it in code. Alarm zero equals I'm just going to set it to 60. He won't start firing immediately. Okay, and then add an event, alarm zero. So when alarm zero goes off, we should know this bit by now. You should be able to pause the video here and judging by the tank things, um, by the object player wizard, in this bit here, the player attack, this part, you should be able to figure out how to make the... Um, orc fire a bullet at the player okay so i'm going to go in here and uh we'll just call it arrow equals instance create everything in game maker should pretty much be lowercase um unless you are making your own function which we're not not at year 10. Uh, year 11 we will need to so instance create and what am I creating? I'm creating it at X and Y. So the position of the orc and the object I'm creating is object enemy dagger. And then I don't know, so I should put call it dagger, not arrow. And then dagger dot speed equals I'll just I'll just say four for now. I should probably have a variable called throwing speed so that I could use it again in different objects. Um, dagger dot 
direction equals point direction x y object player oh, my thing's not called object player is it's object player wizard dot x object player wizard dot y and uh, that's that's it. I'm not actually going to set the image angle for this because I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back into the sprite. We're going to create a really simple animation. Uh, animation, rotation sequence, clockwise. And we want... We want it to go 360 degrees, but we don't want one frame. We want it to do it in maybe 10 frames. Okay, so preview. It's going to look like that, kind of twirling through the air. I might actually undo that. It's too slow. Show preview, 60 frames per second. Animation, rotation sequence, clockwise. I'm going to make it eight frames. That's pretty good. It might be too fast in, in actually. Let's try it, 60 frames per second. Rotation sequence, clockwise, 12. That's a bit better. I'll click that button. Okay, now on the dagger. On the dagger, we're going to go and go collision with the wall. It's going to just destroy itself. It's not going to be able to fly through walls. Um, and that's it. We'll sort out the collision with the player later. But now, these guys should... They'll, they'll only throw one dagger. And they'll all throw it at once. There we go. So those daggers have been thrown. They're really tiny. I'm going to make those sprites a lot bigger in a second. Um, what we need to do in here is once they've thrown the dagger, set the alarm zero. I'll set it to a random... Uh, nah, we'll just go 60. So... 120. Every two seconds, they're going to throw a dagger. All right. Fix up my dagger sprite so it's a bit better. Transform stretch by 200%. Set it to pour. That's a bit better there. And now I can see it. Okay, so I get a whole bunch of daggers that get thrown every two seconds. And they disappear as soon as they hit a wall. Right, so now we've got some enemies throwing some weapons at us. They're easy to dodge, but uh, if they got in close, they wouldn't be. Maybe change the speed up so it's a bit more difficult to dodge that. And um, finally, when the object player wizard collides with the dagger, we are going to go player health minus equals 10 I think what did we say player health yeah so minus equals 10 you lose 10 health from a dagger if player health is less than or equal to zero for now we're just going to restart the game and that's not what it looks like it's actually game restart there we go so game restart and click the tick when we run out of health when we run out of health then we lose game over next video we'll look at creating those spawners as well as some gooey elements uh, might look at the spawners first and then creating a nice little hud for our player